Hey guys, the Redmi S2 is another budget offering from Xiaomi. Features taken from other Xiaomi phones put together to become the Redmi S2. While using it, it resembles and feels a lot like the Redmi 5 Plus. Something fresh about the design are the antenna bands. The dual lines now follows the parameter of the phone and does make the back pretty clean looking. The sides are very rounded and there isn't any sharp corners, which makes the phone pretty nice to hold. Talking about the body, it feels a lot like metal but it's actually plastic. Not surprising as a budget phone. But it comes with a TPU case which is great, as the phone can get pretty slippery. The size of the phone is similar to the Redmi 5 Plus. One-handed use was a little difficult, but at least the power and volume buttons are pretty easy to reach, and feels very tactile too. As always, one-handed mode is there if you need. At the top, you can find the microphone, IR blaster, and headphone jack. The quality from the earphones sound great, pretty similar to the other Xiaomi phones I've used. You can adjust the sound using the inbuilt settings and equalizer. At the bottom, the speaker grills flank the USB ports. The left side is the microphone and the right side is the actual speaker. On the left of the front camera is the notification LED. No color customizations can be done and you can only change two settings for it. The fingerprint sensor is placed at the back, similar to the other Xiaomi phones. As for unlock speeds, I feel it's very fast, somehow faster than before. Accuracy is great as well, and it works even if the display is off. There are two variants available, 32GB of storage and 3GB of RAM which I'm using and 64GB of storage and 4GB of RAM. There is also support for microSD card up to 256GB. If that isn't enough, you can make use of the USB OTG. The Redmi S2 comes with a single SIM tray but it houses two nano SIM and a micro SD card. Both SIM supports 4G, but only one SIM can be 4G at any one time. These can be changed at the mobile network settings. As for the display, the Redmi S2 has an 18x9, 5.99 inch LCD panel with a resolution of 720x1440. It isn't a sharper screen at 269 ppi, but it gets the job done. Like the Redmi 5 series, it ditches the hardware buttons in favour for software navigation. They have gestures to mimic buttons like swiping up to the home screen and swipe and hold to recent apps. I find that when using gestures, the display seems overly sensitive. Sometimes, it will tap onto items when I'm scrolling. Seems a little buggy and hopefully it will be fixed. I have always found Xiaomi phones to have a vibrant display and the Redmi S2 is no exception. Likewise, it's bright enough to be used outdoors. All of us know the Snapdragon 625 is overly used, and not surprising, the Redmi S2 have it as well. Performance is above average, and the chip boasts in power efficiency too. Benchmarks are in the low to mid range, which is pretty expected. Navigating in the UI is generally lag free. But if an app is open for the first time, I will get lags here and there. Other than that, applications load fast without much issues. With the 3GB of RAM on board, multitasking will not be a problem. I tested with two games, PUBG and Rules of Survival. As for PUBG, the only settings is optimal and balanced. I set it to optimal and the frame rate was surprisingly good. For ROS, I set it to excellent and high frame rate. At first, it seems quite smooth, but when there are more players and objects to be rendered, the game struggles with some stuttering. Both games are pretty resource consuming, and if you don't mind setting to lower graphics, it should be fine. Normal usage like calls work as usual. Network bars are around max most of the time. Speed test on both 4G and 2.4GHz Wi-Fi is pretty good and the Wi-Fi only supports 802.11bgn. The Redmi S2 is running Android 8.1 with MIUI 9.5 on top. It's pre-installed with Global ROM which I've verified on the Xiaomi forums. Which means Google services are already installed, so you don't have to do it yourself. 
For a more detailed MIUI 9 video, I have one which I will put in the description box below. Battery life was average for a 3080mAh size. Used it normally with some gaming. Had about 15 to 25% battery left at the end of each day. Gaming takes up a lot of battery, around 7% for 15 minutes of playing. If you don't game a lot, it can definitely last a full day depending on individual usage. Using the bundled charger rated 5 volts 2 amperes, it took around 2 hours and more to fully charge from flat to 100%. It's pretty slow and doesn't support quick charge. To push your battery life further, there is the battery saver mode. The Redmi S2 has a 12 megapixel and 5 megapixel for the portrait and bokeh effect. It also has a common modes like panorama, tilt shift, and scene mode. Likewise, tapping on the triple circle icon brings up filters. Day shots are pretty good with good lighting, and with HDR, photos are much brighter. In low light, photos can get a little grainy, and it takes a little longer to focus. HDR makes low light shots look brighter, but can get blurry easily as it takes longer to focus. As for HHT, I don't see much difference with or without. For manual mode, the only settings you can adjust is white balance and ISO. No problems with auto and manual focus in daylight, but in low light, it's slower and does have a little difficulty getting things in focus. Macro shots are pretty decent, with a distance of about 20cm to be able to focus clearly. Pinch in to zoom can be up to 8 times. For video recording, it can record up to 1080p and is quite stable with image stabilization. The 16 megapixel front camera takes pretty nice bokeh shots with a depth effect as well. This phone bears a lot of resemblance to the Redmi 5 Plus. The Redmi S2 performs well, but there is still room for improvement. The battery can be larger, camera can be better in low light, and also the occasional lags can be minimized as well. Using price as a factor, I will go for the Redmi 5 Plus instead, for the better resolution and larger battery. That's all for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe to see more of such reviews. Thanks for watching and see you guys in the next one.